Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Poetry Out Loud. Yeah, go. Go hmm? What? Okay, I'm going to read this thing. Poetry Out Loud encourages the nation's youth to learn about great poetry through memorization and performance, which helps students master public speaking skills, build self-confidence, and internalize our literary heritage. Hmm. We'll wait to do that. Okay, we got two program changes for you. Sorry about that. Oh, well, actually, yeah. more than that. As you saw, a bunch of these people aren't here. And then, in addition to that, Evan Schmidt is actually Evan Smith. And Lee Adler is also not here. But like, it's yeah. So we've got some special thank yous tonight. Um, we would like to introduce our judges first off. Um, we've got Jeff Bandino. I think, is that how I'm, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, he has judged poetry out loud many times in the last 10 years that Helga has taken part. He also helps students with their writing through writing coaches of Missoula. He lives in the neighborhood and works for the city of Missoula as our interim parking commission director. And then we've got Susan Dassault is a teacher and a lover of good music and poetry. Students take her French cooking classes during the summer, turn out lots of tasty treats from her gourmet kitchen. She's taught classes in Missoula County Public Schools and the University of Montana for many years. Um, and then we have Henrietta Goodwin, is an award-winning poet with two books to her credit, Take What You Want, published by Alice James Books, and Hungry Moon, from the Mountain West Poetry Series at the University of Colorado. Her PhD in English is from Texas Tech University. Henrietta teaches poetry in the University of Montana Creative Writing Program. Yeah. Yes, applause for the judges. They're all so good. Yeah. Um, and the first thing that looks like it's on the program is the invocation. So, is that what, yes. Yes. Invocation to the muse. Okay, so you've all heard of the Iliad and the Odyssey, and those are epic poems that are written in Greek about the, the Trojan War. The Aeneid is the Roman version and it combines both the war book and travel log. So I'm going to recite the first 11 lines of the Aeneid in Latin. <clears throat> Arma verum que cano Troiae qui primus aboris, Italiam fato profugus la vinia qua venit, litora multilet teris iactatus et alto, vi superum sae vae memorem unonis abiram. Multa quoquet bello passus dum conderet urbem in ferret qua deos latio genus unda latinum, albani qua patres at qualtai moinia romae, musa mihi causas memora quo numen aliso, quid, wo, quid wedolens regina deum tat waldeberet casus, in signem pietata verum tata dira labores impularit tantain enemis cae lestibus irae? Thank you for that. Um, now the next category that we have is original or favorite poem. Yeah? Don't forget to say that. I know. The best recitation qualifies as Helge High School's Poet Laureate for 2016. So and the first person we have up is Aline Duflo Williams. Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Meanwhile, tell me of your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, across the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again, whoever you are, no matter how lonely. The world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. Thank you, Aline. 
Next up. Wait, we need time for hmm? All right. All right. Yes. Okay. So while the judges are taking down notes and deliberating, we have a couple of jokes. <laughs> Megan found a whole website of poetry jokes. <laughs> Some of them are pretty great. Some of them are pretty great. Some of them are not so great, but I still think they're funny in their own way. <laughs> okay, Tessa. What, Megan? What did the poet say to Luke Skywalker? What did he say? Metaphors be with you. Uh, uh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm going to tell another one. It's just going. We'll tell one more joke. All right. You want to do this one? Which, which one? Anyone. Pick, pick your favorite. Okay. Megan. Yes. What is a simile? What? It's like a metaphor. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are our judges done deliberating? Awesome. Okay. Next up, we have. Esther Lee. Esther Lyon Del Sordo. Yes. Correct? Extracurricular. When stranded in ceaseless drudgery of daily tasks, monstrous, elephantine, bookish abyss, I am living in the moment, the painful centurion moment. Hope vanishes like a single luminous specter flame in a sigh of tepid darkness. For where is my lifeline thread of wonder? Where flee my joyous contemplations? For when my mind is free to wander ahead and my anticipations tickled by vagrant imaginings, my heart breathes frosty air, chiming, resonant rapture. Our bellies, fed by silver, expect tedious, flagrant abuse shelled with virtuous, seductive gloss. But when doorbells ring with death, only worthless, scorned sparkle garners glory, pleasured bliss. Yet what good is lustrous gold without its royal muster? Carbon coal conceals true diamond, and still, we waste away. Thank you, that was beautiful. All right, are you guys ready for some more poetry jokes? Because we got you if you are. There are so many. <laughs> All right, Tessa. What, Megan? How do poets say hello? How do they? Hey, haven't we met a four? <laughs> I hear your groans of appreciation. Thank you. All right, you choose one. Okay. Okay. Um, there's a lot of really good ones. It's really hard to choose. There are so many. They all make oh, sense. Oh, this one's my favorite. How is a book of poetry like O.J. Simpson's testimony, Megan? What, Tessa? Because nobody buys either of them. <laughs> that was so mean. <laughs> I buy poetry books. I don't know what this joke is talking about, because I have many of them. Are we good? Kay. Awesome. 
So it looks Wait, well, like, other one? oh, the real one yeah. has the changes done. Next up, we have Haley Boyd. Untitled, because art should be self-contained. I'm sick with missing you. When I'm making lists of all the things we didn't do, I'm with fever, and I still can't believe you're gone. The road stretches out in front of me, and it's too long. I can't do this without you when the clouds roll in, and within me still is this pain. I can't contain it, and it bursts, and all that remains is my memory of a laughing you. A you that loved me, but not as much as I love you, and it's not enough, these memories. And I'm racked with maladies, but my throat hurts too much to weep when I dream of you here alive. You put the art into heart and music, and now the absence is stark against the red chair, and it tears into the music, and the music, broken, jagged, cuts arteries. It cuts into me like art has no sympathy, but I know it's not true, and it heals a little when I'm missing you. It's like shouting into space, a little man running a big race, but I can't save face when I'm in this much pain, and how do I stay sane when I'm sick with missing you? When I'm racked with maladies, too truthful to be real, but how can I feel anything but tired when you steal into my dreams and I wake up fearing when the screaming and the demons will become too much? The fire will not warm me when I remember you said you loved me, you liar but I remember holding your hand and my fingers twist around themselves in an agony of missing you. When I write, I get confused about tenses and I sit crumpled like I needed defenses and maybe I did, but you were gone when the cold metal pressed flat against my skin and I vomited, barely breathing, sick with missing you. When I have to pretend like it doesn't hurt every time I say your name and the flames burn my hand and I became what I needed to to survive, but lives turned gray and blame roiled in me, and all I wanted to ask you was to stay. Inside my head, I wander, opening windows and calling your name. I wonder what I was hoping to find, this shadow you that walks the halls of my mind with love and accusatory lined eyes, and I stitch red thread into my heart until my arteries lie and tell me I'm fine. The piano starts and it sears my heart, but all my fears melt away because this, this was where we started to see each other for who we really are. I search for you in the December fog as I remember songs played on plastic necks when I finally gave you that rain check, but we both wanted to play guitar. I didn't know you could sing. And that time at the bus stop when I told you bad jokes until I was cry laughing, hands fisted tight in your jacket and my forehead against your heart as I tried to catch my breath you didn't say anything, but you looked at me with this fond, exasperated wonder. And now I can feel you're so far away, and every day I miss you more with an outpouring of love, and into the night I say I miss you. But the whispers can't change the way I hang on to your every memory. And now I'm playing music all alone, waiting for the phone to go off and for it to be you, but that can never happen. And I miss you every damn day. tell jokes after that but um, Maybe not. we could tell you a little bit about the prizes that are going to be going out tonight hmm? you not don't want to do that now or not tonight but I mean for but like the like system <laughs> yeah okay so. so according to my poetry out loud fact sheet right here um, there's going to be a state competition in Helena and then um, Regionals, there's going to be two, um, all the competitors are going to have to re recite two poems at regionals, and then at nationals, there's three poems. Um, the nationals, in, nationals is in Washington, D.C., at the George Washington Auditorium, in case you were curious, May 2nd through the 4th. Wow, Megan, do you have wow. anything to add? I think that's all the time we have. But, um, <laughs> all right, next up we have Cameron, nope, nope, she's not here. Um, 
Gabe Bernoski. Yes. I have an untitled poem by Joseph Fink. Incomplete, having feelings, strange feelings, feelings you've never felt, incomplete. Is your body filled with hot blood, waving curves of sinew and skin? Can you feel all that blood? Is it even your blood? How can you be sure? Incomplete, are you dizzy from it all, from all of this? Where are your hand, what are your hands doing? Incomplete, where are your hands now? Where have they been? Where are they going? Where are you going? Incomplete, ever broken the surface of something with a hammer? Ever channeled sublime thought into sandpaper? Have you ever touched something because, because you feel things, because touch is the only sense you trust? Incomplete. What is trust? Is making a thing proof that you exist? Is fixing a thing proof that you have transcended history? Mortality? Incomplete. Feel things? Feel things? You can do it. We can help. The Home Depot. <laughs> that was great. All right, and that concludes the original or favorite poem category. And so now we're going to take a second to deliver special thanks. So once again, thank you to our judges for taking your time out of your days to be here and to help us. Let's give them a round of applause again. Um, along with that, we would also like to thank um, our accur accuracy and scoring people who are J Jill Derryberry, Debbie Hendricks, and Sean Gant. Also, oh yes. Um, we would also like to thank the teachers who are not here, but for who taught poetry in their classrooms. Case one is here. Well, not all, I know, but not all of them are here. Um, Britt Hanford, Val Murray, Debbie Hendricks, Caroline Lurgio, Karen Swanson, and Renee Connor. So thank you for teaching poetry at our lovely school. Um, <laughs> um, also, special thanks to Ron Scholl and the Mi Missoula Community Access Television for a media assistant grant to tape and cable cast the event. Um, for more information about the grant program or schedule, dial four, or 542. Um, Cat or go online to www.mcat.org. And then we'd also like to thank our lovely technician, Bridget um, Leonard, who is up in the booth. And now we will be moving on to the Poetry Out Loud um, competition, where the top three will go to regional POL competing at the Hamilton Performing Arts Center, Thursday, February 11th, 2016. Um, first up, we have um, Esther Lyon Del Sordo. Four Portraits of Fire by Lorna D. Cervantes. One, I find a strange knowledge of wind, an open door in the mountain pass where everything intersects. Believe me, this will not pass. This is a world where flags contain themselves and are still, marked by their unfurled edges. Lean stuff sways on the boughs of pitch pine, silver, almost tinsel, all light gone blue and sprouting orange oils in a last Bouquet. Two. 
These were the nest builders. I caught one last morning. I sang, so it fell down stupid from the trees. They're so incorrect in their dead skin. They will fall. Witness their twig feet. The mistake of their hands. They will follow you. They yearn pebbles for their gullets to grind their own seed. They swallow so selflessly and die like patriots. Three. Last Christmas, a family of five woke from their dreaming and dreamed themselves over. The baby in its pink pajamas. The boy in the red flannel bathrobe he grabbed from the door. A mother, a father, and a sister in curlers. All died. A wood frame house, a canister of oil, a match. Watch as it unsettles. They were so cold. Um. Four. I am away from the knowledge of animal mystics, brujas and sorcerers, or the nudging chants of a Tlingit Kachina. I am frightened by regions with wills of their own, but when my people die in the snow, I wonder, did the depths billow up? to reach them. Thank you. All right, Tessa, you know what's coming next. What's coming next, Megan? Jokes. <laughs> OK. All right, this is a pretty classic one. OK. Where do poems come from, Tessa? Where do they come from? Poetry. Ah, this one's pretty funny. Read that one. This one? Yeah. <laughs> what do you get when you combine Robert Frost and James Bond? What? The road not shaken but stirred. <laughs> <laughs> All right. One more? One more. Oh, nope. Looks like we are out of time for this one. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have... Bridget Ball. Shall Earth No More Inspire Thee by Emily Bronte. Shall Earth No More Inspire Thee, Thou Lonely Dreamer Now? Since passion cannot fire thee, shall nature cease to bow? Thy mind is ever moving in regions dark to thee. Recall its useless roving. Come back and dwell with me. I know my mountain breezes enchant and soothe thee still. I know my sunshine pleases, despite thy wayward will. When day with evening blending sinks from the summer sky, I've seen thy spirit bending in fond idolatry. I've watched thee every hour. I know my mighty sway. I know my magic power to drive thy griefs away. Few hearts to mortals given on earth so wildly pine, yet none would ask a heaven more like this earth than thine. So let my winds caress thee, thy comrade let me be, since naught beside can bless thee. Return and dwell with me. Very good. Um, OK, OK, this is my personal favorite poetry joke that we found. <laughs> All right, what's big and gray and writes poetry? What? 
T.S. Elephant. <laughs> Special one for you IB kids out there if you're anywhere in the room. <laughs> I certainly am. Um, <laughs> Special thanks to Aline Duflock Williams laugh. Okay. <laughs> oh gosh, they're a very long joke here. Any other ones? Um, oh, oh, looks like we're out of time, actually. Perfect. Sorry, folks. We didn't need to hear that haiku joke. We might, though. We still might have time. All right. Next up is Evan Smith. 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 <laughs> Pow Wow at the End of the World by Sherman Alexi. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after an Indian woman puts her shoulder to the Grand Coulee Dam and topples it. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after the floodwaters burst each successive dam downriver from the Grand Coulee and topple I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after the floodwaters find their way to the mouth of the Columbia as it enters the Pacific and causes all of it to rise. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall. After the first drop of flood water is swallowed by that salmon waiting in the Pacific, I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall. After that salmon swims upstream through the mouth of the Columbia River, past the flooded cities, broken dams, and abandoned reactors of Hanford, I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall. After that salmon swims through the mouth of the Spokane River, through the Columbia, upstream, until it arrives in the shallows of a secret bay on the reservation where I wait alone. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall. After that salmon leaps into the night air above the water, throws a lightning bolt at the brush near my feet, and starts the fire, which will lead all the lost Indians home. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, after we Indians have gathered around that fire with that salmon, who has three stories must tell before sunrise. One story will teach us how to pray. Another story will make us laugh for hours. The third story will give us reason to dance. I am told by many of you that I must forgive, and so I shall, when I am dancing with my tribe during the powwow at the end of the world. Tessa, I think we have time for the haiku joke. The haiku joke. We just gave away the... Okay. Shh. Pretend you didn't hear that. Megan, how does a poet sneeze? How? Haiku. <gasps> <laughs> okay. Here's one for all you romantics out there. Why did the boy poet introduce himself to the girl poet, Tessa? Why? Because he wanted to meet her. Very nice. And also, that concludes the competitions for tonight. Um, yay! Yeah, let's have a round of applause. Have a round of applause for everybody who performed tonight. That was wonderful. And kudos to you for all performing tonight. Um, I do not know what's happening. There. That's fine. We'll be here all night, folks. As long as you guys are out there to listen to us. <laughs> Some of these jokes don't make sense. I know, I didn't get most of them. Poetry is hard, folks. <laughs> so we've learned. <laughs> wow. Tell All another right. joke, Megan. Yeah. All right, Tessa, how do poets say goodbye? How do they? I'd like to linger a little longer, but it's getting alliterate. Uh... Uh... If you aren't enjoying these jokes, then I don't know why you're here, okay? <laughs> Obviously the highlight of the night. <laughs> Let's do this one. I don't know, it might make sense to some of our viewers out there. <laughs> I don't even know what that word is. So I can't tell this joke. Okay, I'll tell the joke. <laughs> Fun fact. Okay, what is the highest honor among cowboy poets? What? Poet laureate. Uh, Something, I don't know. That was a lariat. 
I told you it wouldn't be funny if you didn't know the word. That's fine. You know, you got to try new things. It's embarrassing, but that's life, folks. Tell that haiku that you told me in the tech booth. Oh, the haiku. You want to know? Okay. <laughs> this is a pretty good one. Quality. Megan will now be reciting her own poem. I did not write it. For the Poetry it. Out Loud competition. Oh, yes. No, I don't want to share this joke. Why are you here? Megan ah. lost her poem. Okay, well, here's one of the poems. I can't find the... Oh, no, I found it. Okay. She found Haikus it. Haikus are easy, but sometimes they don't make sense. Refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> I also have one other poem that I will be sharing with you tonight. This is by an unknown author. <laughs> I dig, you dig, we dig, he digs, she digs, they dig. It's not a beautiful poem, but it's very deep. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you should have gone to the, mic the microphone. That's a dumb poem. Well, folks. You want to read this poem, Tessa? I'll let you decide. <laughs> Putting I, her on the spot there a little bit. I, no. That's what what is this? I don't understand why it's funny. <laughs> That's supposed to be funny. It's again, it's again with the deep thing. That's dumb. <laughs> That's not very nice. You had a poetry competition. No, that poem. The other poems were good. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's not even, it doesn't even have a punchline. Okay. <laughs> Let's not rag on the jokes, all right? <laughs> I think they're very tasteful. Tasteful. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Evan Schmidt. Some of these poem jokes aren't even <laughs> jokes or poems. Evan Schmidt. Thanks for coming out tonight, Evan Schmidt. <laughs> Representing one of the two Schmidts who are supposed to be present. <laughs> it's nice to have you. Is there any other information we want to give them? Hmm. Here's questions. Read the frequently asked questions. Oh, gosh. Why couldn't he, Case Swan? Oh! <laughs> All right. <laughs> we ran out of jokes. <laughs> Thank you for that listening to us. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Tessa. Thanks, Megan. Give me my hand. Right. Thank you for that fine research. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll name the, the uh, top three Poetry Out Loud um, contestants that will go to Hamilton. I have some uh, books of uh, anthologies of, of poems for you and a, a fine, not a plaque, but recognition. And uh, if families are here and would like to know how to get to the Performing Arts Center in Hamilton, um, I'll hang out afterwards and we can uh, make some plans for that. And then after that, then I'll name the Poet Laureate of Hellgate High School. And you might wonder what that is, right, you guys? Um, but it's the person that can represent us and um, in a number of ways. For example, uh, the legislature one year asked for a poet to come and recite, like Miss Hendricks did tonight poem that they knew um, in an official way like that. But also, this could be a very creative um, assignment or position or however you want to frame it. Could be whatever you make it, wherever you see poetry or how to further poetry in our school. So that could happen at events. It could happen during assemblies. It could happen in really small, subtle ways, too. Um, and that would be completely up to the Poet Laureate, and I hope that person really steps forward this year. Um, I want to applaud all these young people because they took the time to memorize poems by heart, and that's not easy. And they all delivered with a lot of class tonight. And <laughs> And 
know that sounds corny, y'all winners, but you know, seriously, even if you're not going to Hamilton, and maybe you'll be relieved not to go to Hamilton in the winter, I don't know, um, but even if you're not going on this year, I hope you come back, and I hope you memorize poems in the future for yourself or for other people when you know that it's um, an important event. A third place, Poetry Out Loud for Hellgate High School, um, is awarded to Bridget Ball. I'll have these guys stay here for a second in case um, families want to take photos. Uh, second place is Evan Smith. First place is Esther Lyon Del Sordo. So I just did the official handshake. You guys, when you get your diplomas, that's how it goes, but the person won't trip over the court. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, our poet laureate of Hellgate High School is Esther Lyon Gilbert. <laughs> Great, um, thank you. Uh, thanks for coming, parents, siblings, grandparents, and uh, neighbors. And thanks to these young people. And yeah. All right. Can we have some lights, please? <laughs> thanks, Bridget. Good night.